What's good, y'all? Welcome back to the Playmakers Corner Podcast. I'm your host for today, Simon Villanos, a.k.a. Coach V. This is episode 231, and if you clicked on, thank you for joining us here. This is our 2023 KCAC Women's Flag Football Season Preview. Yes, it is that time. The season is back around, and we are really excited to be able to cover uh, this thing once more this spring. It was a lot of fun doing that last year, really refreshing doing that last year. And this year, you know, you got some familiar faces, and then you got a number of new teams, which should definitely add more storylines and really make this thing interesting. So super excited to do that, but here we are going to talk about the KCAC That is the Kansas Collegiate Athletic Conference. It's one of the major conferences that have multiple women's flag football teams on the college level, obviously, here. Uh, Them and the Sun Conference have been the two major conferences these last two years. And it's also the home of your defending national champs, along with a lot of other fantastic teams with great players and coaches as well so super excited to talk about this one kind of just going to run down how this is going to work here so i am just going to go ahead and basically talk about every team except for bethel college here uh who is part of the kcac and will be obviously playing a lot of teams in this conference as we talk about each team we'll also talk about their schedule so we'll mention them for sure but we will talk about Bethel College more in depth on a later episode how this is going to work is that we're going to have a Sun Conference preview uh, along with this preview right here and then the last preview that we will drop it will be kind of near the end of this month of February uh, will be a episode just dedicated to new programs out there because there are some that you know play a lot of Sun Conference teams and then you have this one you're in the KCAC then you have Campbellsville you have a couple of new ones out there and we'll briefly mention some JUCOs I'm sure as well if the information is available but on this episode we're going to talk about all the KCAC teams we're going to talk about how last year went we'll talk about this year's schedule if they have any out of conference games or any other interesting in conference games to potentially look out for we'll talk about that schedule then we'll talk about the roster we'll mention every player that has made uh, the all playmaker slash freshman team that me myself and Cody put together last year that list was made up of players nationally so not just in conference but we considered uh, the best of the best nationally and so we'll mention them talk about them there and if we don't talk about them there we'll talk about the all conference players uh, selected to the KCAC first team second team and honorable mentions that came out last year and was voted upon by coaches I believe and so that'll be a good opportunity to talk about more playmakers and then on top of that while we're there you know after that we'll talk about uh, players that may have not made all conference but should be or will be big contributors to their programs so that way we talk about as many players as possible here just so that when you watch these games uh you the listener slash viewer you're familiar with who is out there in case you forgot and so there you go and then after that we will talk about additions to rosters a lot of teams you know just add on a lot of recruits and transfers because there is a natural influx of players that you know may choose to leave because it's not for them or you know uh, financial couldn't work one way or another they choose to leave and so each team has brought in a pretty good amount of recruits and transfers here to replace some of those players who also might have transferred if they didn't walk away so there you go there and then last but not least we will talk about players that either graduated transferred or left uh, because there are some players for each team that were really big parts and played roles for them last year that just won't be back and so uh, that'll kind of give us a chance to speculate a little bit here and then yeah i mean that's pretty much it we're i just really want to preview these teams here talk about them talk about what happened last year and what maybe we could be expecting going into this great 2023 season the third year of women's collegiate flag football
So let's go ahead and hop into it. We're going to talk about Cotty College first. Let's start with how last year went. Definitely a tough year. I mean, the first year of this program was definitely kind of a lot. And then the second year, we knew that it was going to be a rebuilding program. They brought in a really good recruiting class. It felt like they had a good direction and whatnot. But they were going to take some time putting it together. Definitely some bright spots despite having a tougher 2022 campaign here. In where they basically lost every game except for one against Milligan, who they beat 26 to 12 that's that team in Tennessee there and so that was pretty big time for them uh, they did have a close loss uh, they had a couple close losses only two that I would really consider as close against Kansas Wesleyan 19 to 7 which is it was a really good showing I remember watching that game uh, on live stream and that was a really good game by Cotty they had their chance to potentially win it take the lead there they just came up a little bit short and so that kind of really showed the potential of this Cotty college team and then they also lost to Milligan 7 to 6 that was a back-to-back -back game uh, that they played in Tennessee they played Milligan twice there probably another game you could have won obviously you're basically an extra point away from winning that one so that's tough but still though a pretty solid season a lot of things that you really had to like uh, going into this 2023 season now with that being said going into this season uh, there are some changes here uh, let's start with the coaching staff and then we'll talk about the schedule because we're going to talk about the players later. So there is a new coach over at Cotty College here. Their head coach's name is Alicia Freeman. She has a lot of experience, 18 years of uh, football playing and coaching experience that she is going to be bringing to this program. Uh, most recently, she did serve as the assistant coach at Cali War Women's football team in California as you could probably guess and then last spring she was also selected to coach at four youth flag football clinics hosted by the Los Angeles Rams here and then obviously I mean like I said before she has played on multiple women's football teams in California so a lot of experience here uh, I'm sure she could relate to where a lot of these players are at and she will be the new leader for this Cotty college football team so uh, first off congrats to her for getting the job and we'll be really interested to see uh, how this season will go and what changes may or may not happen so there you go there now talking about this year's schedule here i know last year they scheduled um a, i believe they went to tennessee and they played milligan i want to say that was their only i guess road trip the other teams they played in the regular season that is were all conference teams it wasn't until the postseason at the national tournament in georgia in atlanta where they played teams um, outside of uh, kansas and uh, tennessee they played kaiser here who they lost to uh 69 to 0 and then they lost to fmu in tournament play 26 to 0 so there you go just to throw that out there anyways going into this season though i don't believe they're playing any out of conference teams uh, i am looking at their website so that, i'm sure that might change i know there are some teams that added on games uh mid-season last year and whatnot it, it was a whole crazy deal. I'm sure that may happen this year as well. It's a long season, so we'll see what happens. But as of right now, it looks like they're playing all conference teams uh, twice. That does include newcomer Bethel College. They'll be playing them on March 11th and April 1st. Uh, oh, and sorry, okay, they are playing another team out of conference, and I guess out of NAIA too. They are playing Fort Scott Community College as their first game here on March 1st. That's a Wednesday, so go ahead and go support them out there. I believe that will be at home at Cotty, and so that will be a nice little tune-up game before they do hit the regular season. So there you go. That is their schedule for this year. Uh, outside of that Fort Scott game, you know, they are going to play all conference games, but it'll be really interesting to see how Fort Scott plays them and uh, how competitive they could be. Fort Scott 
is a first year program for all JUCOs uh, with a flag women's flag football program. This will be their first year, and there there are a couple of teams that will be playing JUCOs at some point during this football season. Just throwing that out there. Now, moving on, let's talk about their roster here. They had one player make our all-freshman team. Like I said, that is a team where we consider all the freshmen in the country. It's not just in the conference. And Kenzie Murdoch actually made that. She's a linebacker for them, a captain, a leader, all that great stuff. Uh, also, I'm going to plug these episodes. We broke down her high school film on episode 30 of the Playmakers Corner. Jeez, that was 201 episodes ago, uh, I believe. So there you go. Uh, we broke down her film there, and then we also interviewed her on episode 35, so you could check that out there. And we hope to get her on the show sometime uh, eventually. I know it's about to get really busy, but we, we hope to do that as well. A uh, great friend of the pod. But anyways... She made our freshman team. She was also an all-conference uh, second-team linebacker as well. Last year was her freshman year. Uh, going into this year, she should still be the leader of this Cody College team, and specifically the defense. The defense had some good moments last year. I mentioned uh, what happened in those wins. They won 26-12 defense, only allowing 12 points. They did have some close losses uh, against Milligan, only allowing 7, and Kansas Wesleyan only allowing 19. And Kansas Wesleyan has a very explosive football team offensively, I would say. And so doing that in, in a very early on game was big time. And so going into this year, you could expect Kenzie to be a key part of this defense a defense that should be even better going into this second year as they are returning a lot of key parts there now let's talk about some other players that also got some all conference honors here Christella Jean Juiced uh she was uh hopefully I'm saying that name right but I really feel like I'm not so I apologize on that but she was a first team punter for Cotty Alyssa Hollis uh freshman she made second team receiver Taylor Jordan was a second team screen blocker Angelina Cruz was an honorable mention uh, for receiver, along with Daniela Goodridge, another honorable mention for receiver, uh, both excellent athletes. Most of those players will be returning here, but really look out for Angelina Cruz here. She'll be playing linebacker, uh, or she's only listed at linebacker this season, but I'm sure she'll get in potentially at receiver. And then Daniela Goodrich, she is an athlete that we ID'd last year as someone who could be a big contributor, you know, someone who could play both sides of the football. She was a solid DB. She was a good receiver. If the football is in her hands, she is going to make a play, an absolute playmaker. So definitely look out for her. Um, I also want to say she was the first player from Panama to play women's flag football. I could be wrong, though, but I'm just she, I'm going to say she's one of the first because I don't think you could go wrong with that. I don't think that's a wrong statement. So there you go. Uh, I think those two will really turn up. And then there's Alyssa Hollis. She was a receiver slash quarterback slash athlete that kind of did a lot for this team. I want to say she played defense, but I definitely remember her for some of the big plays she made on offense last year. You know, this offense really struggled at times, but they had some big chunk plays every now and then. And I feel like Alyssa Hollis was behind a lot of those plays, whether she was scrambling or throwing or receiving. I mean, she's just a very good athlete. This year, she's actually listed as a quarterback, so that'll be interesting. I know uh, they did bring in a couple players here. She is probably somebody I would presume as a potential starter, or at least she would get a chance to compete for that starting job. So really be on the lookout for her. Another year under the belt, another offseason under the belt should have really helped her development and become a better quarterback because I know that was kind of a position that they were shuffling every now and then and there were some questions uh, every now and then at that position that kind of stalled this offense at times so we'll see how that goes but regardless she's a great athlete she's very versatile uh, she's somebody that could be moved 
moved around here, but we'll see if this sticks going into this next year. That I think that's a pretty big storyline, I would say, for this team, honestly, that quarterback position. Now, let's go ahead and talk about some of the players that left, whether they graduated, transferred, or just walked away here. And basically how I did this, I just looked at the roster from last year, compared it to this year. I would think the rosters by this point uh, are finalized. I mean, the season starts in like a month, if not less, so it really should be done by now. So, just throwing that out there. Uh, I'm also recording this as of February 5th, 2023, in case it is not updated. But, just going off of what I saw here, here are the players that are no longer with the team that were on it last year. You have Gabby Bastidas, Isabel Fairbanks, Taylor Jordan, who was a second team screen blocker for them, so that's kind of a tough loss. Uh, you have Dylan Andrews, you have Emily Kane, she played quarterback for them last year, got a lot of snaps, uh, was rotated in a lot, so you'll be losing somebody who was in that rotation and whatnot, and then they are are also losing Christella John Juice. Uh, she graduated, I'm pretty sure, because she was a senior last year. She was their first team punter, so they're gonna have to replace that as well. So those are the players that left. Uh, two all conference players, uh, or you know, all conference consideration type of players, uh, are leaving the team. And so obviously, I mean, that sucks. And then you're also losing a quarterback here. Um, it does, I guess, take away from the QB competition just a little bit, but it would have been nice to have a quarterback with experience uh, from last year, even if it wasn't the greatest year. So there you go there. Now, let's talk about the additions. They brought in a pretty solid recruitment class here, starting with Victoria Rosas out of SIG, out of New York here. Uh, we actually broke down her film on episode 136, so if you want to hear more about her and what she brings to the team, you could go ahead and check that out. Uh, there's a lot of players we got to talk about, and a lot of teams as well, so I won't go too much in depth there, but she is a good athlete. She's been part of one of the best flat football programs uh, in the entire country in Staten Island Giants so definitely excited about that speaking of SIG I believe she was a part of them but they're also bringing in quarterback uh, slash safety Amaya Cor Corula I want to say out of New York excuse me if I am saying that incorrectly but she also played for THT Flag Football, is also from New York. Not only does she play quarterback, I'm just looking through some of her highlights here. She does play on the defensive side of the football and is pretty solid there. So regardless, you could still probably expect her to, you know, get some playing time hopefully this season here while also competing for that quarterback position and some playing time there as well. So uh, definitely makes things a lot more interesting. And then as well, they are bringing in uh, Tania Bolden. She's a running back slash rusher uh, from Florida. Then you got Emma Bruce here, linebacker center. Couldn't find uh, what high school or where she's from. It wasn't listed at least on the roster. But moving on, though, they are also bringing in Daniela Takashima Gonzalez, uh, played for a very good flag football program, one of the premier ones here in the Lady Ghost. I, I want to say that's a team based out of Arizona. I really could be just straight up wrong, though. But also plays for the Centinelas, uh Centuries. Uh, that's another great football, flag football team here. Uh, definitely coming from two really good organizations and has been a big contributor to both here. Listed at wide receiver, linebacker, and corner. I'm sure she will be used at a number of different positions here. Um, a great athlete as well. Come, Like I said, comes from a winning program and one of the best in the entire country. So got to be excited about that. And then another freshman they added on here was Carrion Clout or Cloyd. Excuse me. So there you go there from Wisconsin. Um not every day you see a recruit from Wisconsin, but love to see that. Then they also added Destiny Martinez out of Florida, Joliet Johnson out of Nevada. Uh, 
By the way, just a very quick note about Johnson here. She also played tackle football in Nevada, which is really interesting. Kenzie Murdoch was the same way. Uh, Tackle football player slash flag football player from Nevada. And usually, I'm just throwing this out there, when you have players that have played tackle football, it translates really well over to flag. We've seen that with Kenzie, with Caroline Simpson, with a number of players. So that's a really good pickup they're adding some toughness uh, more toughness and some grit and grind just a little bit you know and then last but not least they're also adding Shamise Ali excuse me if I'm saying that wrong wide receiver DB out of Florida as well so there you go and then I want to say this is either a transfer or just a I mean, someone who tried out and was a late add-on, but she is listed as a senior. They also brought in Chandler Tall, um, a linebacker, and so that'll be really interesting to see how she contributes to this program as well. But a very good recruiting class, definitely uh, players that will get in the rotation, compete for spots and whatnot with the number of uh, players that they were losing last season. I want to note they had 10 additions here, and I want to say this might be one of their bigger rosters compared to the last two years, last two seasons. They got 17 players listed on the roster, which is a pretty big deal. I mean, you don't want to have a million players playing both ways, and then you also have injuries to keep in mind and whatnot. Uh, Teams kind of with smaller rosters kind of struggle a little bit more down the stretch of games especially some high scoring games i would say so uh very good to see a nice healthy roster here uh 17 players and athletes that are gonna go to war for Cotty. also i want to throw this out there i don't know if i mentioned this when talking about rosters but uh they have one player who i believe was a part of the last three teams here and that is jennifer aberstock she is a quarterback senior out of nevada green valley high school to be specific here uh it'll be interesting to see if she could also compete and crack this rotation as well being one of the leaders i would say of this team somebody at least who has been on the squad longer than anybody else currently here Now, as we wrap up, let's talk about some storylines, things to keep in mind going into this 2023 season. I already touched on a lot of these, but uh, I do want to mention last year in our final PMC Power Rankings, I believe this was after week 13. It had to have been because it was the only one I could find, but they ranked or ended the year ranked at 11 ahead of Milligan and Xavier. Going into this year, hopefully they could do a little bit better. Obviously, a lot more teams will be added on. So even if they do get back to 11, if not higher, that should still be a pretty good accomplishment considering there's like four or five teams getting added on to our power rankings here. So just keep that in mind. Uh, But looking into this 23 season, definitely some questions, you know. Um, It's going to be interesting to see how well this first year head coach does, you know, how much production she could get out of this team. Last year, I would say that was a team that, you know, had some really good defensive stops when it mattered, gave the offense kind of a lot of opportunities to score, but the offense kind of just struggled a little bit. I would say the quarterback position was uh, a position in flux. They tried out a couple players there. Some players had some good days, but some most of the time I would say had some pretty tough days or just took a minute getting going. And so it will be interesting to see if that position could stabilize because obviously, you know, that position really controls how well the offense does, especially I would say on this level if you don't have a good quarterback then I mean you're just going three and out basically all the time and that is not good and I would say the receivers are definitely there really like Daniela Goodridge out there I think she is somebody who could have a breakout season depending on how the quarterback does and whatnot I really like Alyssa Hollis as an athlete she's somebody that you can move around you could really get creative with some of the play calling because of the type of athlete she is Uh, throw out Angelina Cruz as well I mean this is a team that has the talent I feel like to be a solid proficient offense and you know there are some teams out there I'm gonna throw out Thomas as a name that aren't exactly 
you know, the most explosive, like, high-scoring offense. And part of that is also by choice. I'm going to give them credit there. But still, though, they are situationally aware. If they need to put together a long drive, they can. And they have. And that's why they were the second-best team in the country last year and vied for that national championship. And so looking at this Cotty team, I mean, there's a blueprint. You know, you could still have a good defense uh, and have a solid enough offense to win some of these closer games at the very least. And so we'll definitely see how that goes, how the offense improves this year. I would assume that they should improve compared to last year. And then also, you know, it will be interesting to see how the defense does. I mean, they are returning a lot of players this year. Let's see if they could do it again, right? So that'll be really interesting to see here. They should probably win more than two games this season. Um, or, sorry, one game uh, this season. And regardless, I think that is still a good opportunity to improve moving forward. I really believe they have a good core here. They brought in some really good athletes uh, that should contribute to that and be a part of this core. And so this year should be about growing, but, you know, definitely some questions. We'll see how well the head coach does, what the quarterback position slash offense is looking like this year, and uh, whether they could get the full potential out of that team offensively or not. Uh, defensively is probably the last question, and really the only question there is can they, you know, get better and put out better games I'm sure they can, but, you know, we'll see what happens and whatnot. I felt like they played pretty well, um, more so than not. I'm just going to be honest. So, there you go. Now, let's keep it rolling here. And let's talk about Kansas Wesleyan. Last year, finished second in the KCAC. Uh, and they won the silver bracket for the second straight year at the national tournament there and so this is a good program i would say and there's a lot of players returning uh, a lot of interesting storylines as well but let's talk about last season a little bit more in depth so they went 11 and 8 at least that's what it says on their website six and two in conference in conference the only team they lost to was ottawa um, and they lost to them a couple of times i don't know if this also includes the KCAC tournament, but I'm just going to list off their losses to Ottawa here. But they'd lose to them 39 to 6 to start the season, then 41 to 6, then 45 to 19, and then 34 to 7. I believe that was in the NEIA, uh, or sorry, the KCAC postseason tournament. But other than them, they beat everyone in this conference, though. So Ottawa kind of just seemed to be their crypt tonight. Now, let's talk about some of their other losses because they did travel to Florida as well to play some of those teams. Uh, didn't fare super well here. I mean, they lost to Warner 32-13. Thomas was a little bit of a closer game, 26-6, though, along with Weber 26-7. So that was kind of a tough stretch there. Uh, they would also lose to Weber. I believe this was pool play. 14 to 6. I went back and listened to that recap. That was definitely a winnable game. Uh, they just couldn't come up with enough touchdowns there, and uh, there were some mistakes. So it is what it is. I mean, really, they only lost the uh, top five, talks, top six teams in the country, I would say, at least according to our power rankings. So just throwing that out there. So, you know, it could be worse. They were probably more middle of the pack than anything i mean they did win the silver bracket and were able to contend with some teams that did make the gold bracket so just throwing all of that out there now some key wins here uh, let's talk about what happened in the national tournament they beat milligan 46 to 0 then they beat fmu florida memorial 31 to 6 and then they beat a uh, conference team here university of st mary 26 to 7 on their way to the silver bracket championship uh and that dub beating the spires was actually the game that won them uh the silver bracket championship so just throwing all of that out there altogether not a bad season i mean you had a winning record for sure so definitely something to keep in mind here now before we talk about this season and this year's schedule i do want to say 
there was a coaching change at Kansas Wesleyan. Coach Pham, who was the head coach for them these last two years, uh, moved on to Minot State. So just wishing him all the best. Obviously, he was a supporter of the podcast. But they would bring in an excellent head coach here in Melinda Wynn. Actually got to meet her last fall. She was the only NAIA flag football coach to come to Colorado's first ever state women's flag football tournament um for the high school level obviously and so really appreciate her coming to colorado got to talk to her quite a bit cody also got to talk to her as well um helped her out with players and all that great stuff uh when we could but just talking to her last year she was super excited about this team said they had a lot of great athletes um very good core and uh she just emphasized that over and over again that's kind of all I'm going to say there as far as what we had to talk about. But let's talk about her background just a little bit, at least according to her bio here on the Kansas Wesleyan website. But she was serving as the offensive coordinator for Team America, uh, a women's flag football team that would go ahead and, I mean, they had the top players from the United States and they would go ahead and participate in tournaments around the world. So she knows this thing, you know, definitely coming from the offensive side of the football and, you know, having that experience coaching flag football already. She was also a performance trainer for X Factor Athletics, trained athletes on skills focused on flag football fundamentals and obviously advanced skills as well. A lot of those athletes range from rec athletes up through the professional ranks just adding to that resume and then on top of that she's been involved in football and flag football since she was seven as a student of the university of maryland she was the head coach and quarterback of two club flag football teams and helped lead them to nine total championships over a six year span so she is more than qualified for this thing coming from the east coast hopefully bringing more of that winning mentality to kansas wesleyan a program that has found a lot of early on success in its early years and i think they have a heck of a football coach and human being out there so super excited for her and uh what this coaching staff has ahead of them also just gonna throw out there Tarek smith uh he was an assistant coach i believe he helped out with quarterbacks last year he will be returning as well so you still have some continuity there so really excited about this coaching staff moving forward i think they are in good hands i mean this is a very talented football team now looking at their schedule for this year there are i don't think there will be any road trips out to play any out of conference teams uh like i said that could always change they could always schedule those out of conference games later on in the season to prep for the national tournament and all of that great stuff but as of right now february 5th uh it looks like they are playing just their conference here each team they are playing twice that includes newcomer bethel college uh, which is actually their first game here they play bethel college on march 8th Uh, that's roughly a month from now so there you go there Uh, Those are going to be their regular season games. And then obviously there's going to be the KCAC tournament and the national tournament as well. Uh, Didn't mention this when talking about Cotty, but I just kind of felt like that was a given. So I'm just going to throw that all out there. So boom, there you go there. Now let's talk about the roster here. First off, talking about players who got all playmaker honors uh, or made our freshman team. They had one player who made both all playmaker and our all freshman team here and that was angel roman an excellent athlete for them plays wide receiver db she was putting up numbers her freshman year uh bonafide star definitely somebody who should really be attracting a lot of attention on both sides of the football and i'm sure teams will do what they can to stop her from doing her thing and then you also have lexi marquez along with Alexa Mansur, who both made our all-freshman team as linebackers. They will also both be returning here. Uh, They both really picked it up at the end of the season. I might say some very good performances 
at the end, including holding USM, uh, the Spires to seven, holding FMU to six, uh, not allowing Milligan to score at all, um, holding Weber to only six or sorry, 14 in that game they lost. I mean, they had some really good defensive games at the end of their season. And I would say a lot of it was because of an Alexa or Alexi just doing their thing out there and, uh, you know, flying to the ball and uh, getting those flag pulls and breaking up those passes. And so for this Kansas Wesleyan team to be bringing back three players who made our all freshman team, one of them making our all playmaker team as a freshman, I believe actually she was one of the, one of the few that made our all playmaker team as a freshman. That is big time. I mean, you're returning a very talented core there. So there you go. Now let's talk about everyone else because they do have a lot of players who got all conference honors here. Uh, Alexa Mansur, by the way, she was on episode 230. Uh, if you want to check out that and you know see what we had to say about her back then, back when she was a high school prospect, a lot of it I feel like has transferred over and will continue to transfer over going into this year. But she made second team linebacker. Uh, Angel Roman was was actually a first team all conference wide receiver and DB got honors for both of those. Uh, Lexi Marquez made first team linebacker, uh, which was huge as well. And so there you go there. Now let's talk about everyone else. Kendra Velasquez Monroe here. She made first team running back and was an honorable mention at linebacker. Really good check down option. Good athlete in general was part of that defense that really turned up at the end of the season. And then, you know, she was definitely a good receiving option as well for her quarterback, Brianna Hernandez Silva. Uh, I thought she might graduate. I know they did a whole scene your uh, night thing and whatnot I'm I guess I was just mistaken and honestly I think there were a couple of players that I thought would graduate and leave and walk away they probably had that choice but you know they chose to come back and so super excited to be able to see her this year as well play she is an electrifying quarterback she was actually first team quarterback here in the KCAC and was a second team DB being able to play both sides of the football as a quarterback I mean she was a legit dual threat someone that could throw the ball and then also move really well and rush and so she is going to be coming back this is her third year I believe she has been part of all of the Kansas wide Wesleyan flag football teams in their short history. That's definitely big time. I mean, quarterback is an important position. You know, it really runs the entire offense and whatnot. And so now you are getting a head coach here who also, you know, played quarterback and has been an offensive coordinator. And so she's a very offensive minded coach. And so hopefully the production will continue and even potentially get better better you know as she is going into her third year as the quarterback for this team and then as a DB as well she is extremely talented part of a very strong defense for the most part I would say so boom there you go there and then you also have Jada Wilson a great receiver slash DB she made second team for both was just a freshman last year but really contributed to this team especially once they started focusing on Angel Roman I mean she made some really big plays at wideout and DB and so that's another great athlete that they'll be bringing back here and then you have a couple players here you have Marissa Rubino who was part of this team uh, that first Kansas Wesleyan team she made honorable mention as wide receiver you have Kaylin Dawson who was a second team center you have Kui Wailai who was an honorable mention receiver as a freshman she made some really big plays especially in the second half of the season i would say you have alexis jimenez she was an honorable mention screen blocker and linebacker and then finally you also have courtney dinkle who is recognized as a punter also shout out colorado uh the only colorado uh athlete currently playing women's flag football still though pretty cool to see uh, out of Greeley, out of northridge high school to be specific there so always got to show love to our Colorado athletes. So boom, that is uh, all the players that got recognition from last year and whatnot. I feel like that is pretty much the core 
of this Kansas Wesleyan team. I mean, you have a lot of great athletes who could play both ways, play both sides of the football, and play it at a very high level here. I mean, looking at players like Brianna Hernandez Silva, Angel Roman, Kendra Velasquez Monroe, you know, you got a lot of those type of players here who I think will continue to do that as they enter their second and third years with the team. Now, let's talk about some players they lost. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm just going to throw this out there. Out of all the players, out of all the teams that I've evaluated so far here, um, teams I'm going to talk about here later on this episode and talk about in the Sun Conference episode, I believe Kansas Wesleyan has lost the least amount of players. Not a lot of turnover here. There's only four players that are moving on, and two of them have graduated. Uh, Ryan Katz, she has graduated and move on. Uh, Megan Moran, she has graduated and move on. And then you have Marissa Rubino here. She was a big part of this team uh, in the first and second years of this program. She has actually transferred to Kaiser down in Florida. I mean, she's from Florida, so it makes sense here. That is... Definitely a loss, I would say, as far as, you know, depth in that wide receiving room goes and whatnot. So that's definitely tough to have uh, to lose her. But on top of that, they're also losing another very good receiver and Kui Wailai. Uh, couldn't find out if she transferred somewhere else or whatnot, but she was just not on the roster anymore. And so that is another receiver that they will be without going into this season here. Uh, Marissa Rubino being an honorable mention receiver in this conference along with Wiley as well. So definitely some tough pills to swallow. But other than that, I mean, pretty much the entire band is getting back together here not only are they returning most of their core that we just talked about but they are going to be adding on 11 new players so let's go ahead and talk about it here starting with uh anson deanne Rab rabano oh my gosh i feel like i just butchered that ans deanne rabano i Hopefully, I'm saying that right. She's a freshman out of New Jersey here. She is listed as a rusher. So, definitely going to be somebody that you got to, you know, consider for that rotation there on defense. They are also adding Samari McKinney out of Douglasville, Georgia, out of Douglas County High School here. Uh, she was an excellent track athlete for them and was also a part of that first ever Douglas High School, or sorry, Douglas County High School uh, women's flag football team. They've only been around for two years. She's only played since her 11th grade year, but her senior year, she really showed out here for that team. Uh, they said she was their MVP. She led the team in receiving yardage, rushing yardage, total touchdowns, and tackles. Had 55 tackles, nine total touchdowns, and so she was a very versatile athlete that you know, might have went under the radar just a little bit here, was offered by a couple of teams, you know, but like I said, she only played uh, since her 11th grade year, and so the sky is really the limit for Samari McKinney here, she will be playing DB, or at least that's what's listed here over at Kansas Wesleyan, and so that's another big pickup to add potentially to their defense. They will also be bringing in Shania Marape. Hopefully, I am saying that right. But out of Canada, actually, one of the few Canadian players to be playing NAI flag football. She is a quarterback, a very athletic quarterback that could run around, um, throw the football obviously super well. I mean, she's a good athlete. I'm sure will be used and moved around. Uh, definitely somebody to keep an eye on because Brianna Hernandez Silva does only have a couple more years left of L eligibility uh she's actually listed as a senior this time around here and so uh definitely a quarterback that might be in consideration to potentially take over moving forward so there you go there and then you have jasmine whitfield out of florida specifically riverview high school she is listed as a receiver but she did also do pretty well as a DB over there. I mean, her senior year, she had 103 receptions for 857 receiving yards, six touchdowns, also had 19 tackles, along with six interceptions 
as well, which was pretty big time. So they'll be getting another very versatile player. They are also bringing in a couple Nevada players here. Angel Amarez from Green Valley High School. Layla Casillian, I want to say, also from Green Valley High School. Trinity Antonelli from Liberty High School. Uh, and then also Tori and I just have no idea how to say her last name here. Uh, and I apologize on that. But she is from Arbor View High School. If you're listening to this, uh, let us know how to say that. So that, you know, we don't disrespect you. So, boom. There you go. There are a couple Nevada players per usual, you know, added to the roster. That's a pretty normal thing. And then they also have a couple transfers here as well. Kalia Judd, uh, she is from Florida here. Transferred from Palm Beach State College. Will play DB for them. You also have Amaya Badgett. Uh, she is transferring from Florida Memorial, where I believe she was a quarterback, or at least that's what she's listed at right now. And then you also have Valeria Gonzalez. She is from, well, she's from Kansas originally. Honestly, maybe she was a walk-on as well. She's listed as a sophomore and whatnot, but she was not on the team last year. At least I don't believe so, but she also will be added on. She'll be coming on as a rusher, so a lot of good players added on here. A lot of players that should be able to contribute to this team uh, and add to the course. You gotta like that. Now, you also got to consider that they only really lost four players. Uh, two of them were big time, and Marissa Rubino and Kui Wailai played very big roles in the offensive felt. But, you know, you still return your top two receivers and Angel Roman, Jada Wilson. You also still have your quarterback, who was an all-conference first-team QB. You also have Kendra Velasquez-Monroe, who was a first-team running back for this squad. And so the offense probably really shouldn't lose a step too much here um they should still be pretty productive here on top of that you have an offensive minded head coach and you are bringing back Tarek smith as well who has worked with brianna hernandez silva these uh last well last season so boom those are all the players that they have here uh that are part of their core you could also probably expect their defense to take another step forward last year i mean most of these athletes were freshmen you know, you obviously had a couple that uh, were on the team beforehand and, you know, were playing both the ways. And so I'd say a lot of the defense, I mean, I'm looking at Lexi Marquez, uh, Angel Roman, um, Alexis Jimenez, who were freshmen. That was their first year playing. And, you know, they really turned it up kind of at the end of the season. They had their moments, obviously, but at the end of the season, they would win them a lot of games. So just got to keep all of that in mind. Also, I'm just also going to correct something. I believe I said Jada Wilson was a freshman last year. She was on the team uh, back in 2020. So she's one of the vets along with Brianna Hernandez Silva. And so I really believe Kansas Wesleyan has a pretty healthy core, a uh, good mix up of third year and second year players i mean they return they uh, retained slash returned a lot of their players from last year and so moving on here they really shouldn't lose too much of a beat even with a new head coach i would say expectations are still high now talking about storylines going into this season i think the big storyline is can they move into the next tier of flag football teams before i feel like they've always kind of been in the middle there you know just you know, they have the ability to beat some of these top tier flag football teams that were ranked ahead of them, at least according to our power rankings uh, and whatnot, because Kansas Wesleyan was always kind of in that middle between five to seven. And even in 2020, we didn't cover it, but they won the silver bracket that year. 
one got to think, okay, you know, when are they going to be able to move up to the gold bracket? When are they going to be able to really compete here uh, with some of these top tier teams? And also, I think the other thing to keep in mind as well, when are they going to be able to really compete and push Ottawa, who has pretty much ran this conference uh, with Kansas Wesley and probably being one of their biggest threats uh, in conference uh, last season and probably this season as well, at least on paper. I would say. So those are the questions that are looking to be answered this season. Really looking to see if they can take that next step forward. They've been a good program. I don't think there's really been any doubt about that. But it'll be interesting to see whether they take that step forward and become a true contender. I would say, and I believe Cody would probably believe in that as well. Last year, their final ranking was four. And I'm going to be honest, there were a lot of people mad about that. And, you know, I think this is the year where they got to prove some people wrong and continue to develop and get better as a program. They have enough good players, good to great players, where I believe they can do that. So that is what a what is ahead for this Kansas Wesleyan team. Like I said, I mean, they've had a lot of success these last two years. They've gotten better going into this year. I mean, they have a very good balance of players here of, you know, upperclassmen, freshmen, sophomores, transfers, recruits, all of that great stuff. A good coaching staff, in my opinion. It's going to be about putting it together, you know, seeing where they could really stack up uh, against uh, not only the teams of their conference, but against teams that are, I would say, true contenders and have been contending and have been in the gold bracket. I believe if you're in the gold bracket, then you're a contender. They haven't quite been able to get there these last two years. And so that's going to be a really big question moving forward. And I would also say, you know, competing with Ottawa, you know, can you get a win over them? Can you play them a little bit closer than you have in the last couple of years give them a little bit more of a scare you know so there you go those are the storylines moving forward great program great team definitely expecting a lot of entertaining games this season now let's move on to another team here the university of saint mary the spires Last year, a little bit of an up and down season. Went seven and nine here. Here's some of their wins. They beat Cotty 37 13, beat Midland 26 19 and 2014. Then they beat Cotty again 52 to 0, as well as 39 to 14. That last time, 39 to 14 dub was in the national tournament in pool play. And then in the national championship, still, they would beat Milligan. 49 to 7 in their first elimination game. In the second elimination game, they would play Midland once more, beat them 25 to 13 before facing Kansas Wesleyan in the Silver Bracket Championship, where they unfortunately lost 26 to 7. I definitely say that game was much more closer uh, than the final score would indicate. Now, they lost to Kansas Wesleyan a lot this season. They were not able to beat them once despite having many close games here. Uh, to start the season, they lost them 34 to 12. Then they lost them 27 to 13. And then it became 21 to 20. That was a game where they were leading, I'm pretty sure, by 20 at like halftime or something like that. And then Kansas Wesleyan came back and beat them. So that was absolutely insane. And then in the KCAC Conference Tournament here, uh, they would only lose to them 24-21. to Really gave them a run for their money there. And so Kansas Wesleyan just kind of seemed to be the team that they couldn't quite uh, beat here and get over that hump, which was really tough to see. And then I believe their only out-of-conference loss was to Warner in that NAI uh, National Tournament who they lost to 42-27 in pool play. So, relatively closer game, you know. Uh, and then the other out-of-conference team they played was Milligan, who they beat, like I said. So, there you go. Little bit of an up-and-down season. Found success. Went back to the Silver Bracket Championship. And, unfortunately, just came up short once more. So definitely some things to talk about, but before we do, 
the University of St. Mary also got another new head coach here as their former head coach Angelica Grayson is actually now working with the LA Chargers so obviously wishing her all the best there but they would go ahead and hire Amber Clark uh I want to say she was somebody that I feel like I've definitely watched before whether it was in Indianapolis a couple of years ago or I've seen some of her games live but she did play DB in the Legends Football League during that time uh, she was actually nominated for League MVP as a DB, which is impressive, and Defensive Player of the Year as part of the Atlanta Steam, which was pretty big. She was also named the top defensive back in the nation by USA Flag Football. Uh, she was an alternate player for that USA Flag Football team in 2022 as well so she has uh, quite a bit of experience more of a defensive minded head coach which should be really interesting moving forward now let's talk about this season and their schedule they will not be traveling out of state to play out of conference teams here uh looks like they're gonna play all in conference teams twice so there you go, uh, starting March 8th, that's their opener against Midland University, so that should be a good one. Those games are usually pretty competitive and close there. They will also be playing Fort Scott Community College on March 29th. That'll be at home as well, just throwing that out there. So make sure you go support them in women's flag football. But other than that, they play everyone in their conference twice here. Something to note, they do have six home games, by the way. That Fort Scott game will be at home. So just, you know, put in all of that out there so that you could go support them. But let's go ahead and talk about this roster here. They have, I'm just going to be real, one of the smallest rosters in all of NAIA flag football. And so for them to really succeed uh, these last couple years and do what they have with these small numbers has truly been impressive. And so we'll see if they could continue that this year. But they have some great playmakers that you got to look out for. Let's talk about... Uh, the one player that made our all-freshman team, and that is Caroline Simpson out of Denton, Texas last year as a freshman, uh, both at receiver and DB here. She was phenomenal. Uh, I mean, she was big time. She was a playmaker, somebody that was very aggressive as a DB, I would say, played well on both sides. But as a receiver, she had some excellent games. When she was on, she was on. She actually made our all-freshman team as a receiver just uh throwing that out there but definitely somebody who could play both ways uh she is a steal for saint mary here i would say a uh, person looking to you know take another step forward and be a bigger part of this team and help them find more success and so there you go that's caroline simpson one of the um well the only player to make our all freshman team but like I said, let's talk about the roster and talk about everyone who had all conference considerations and recognition here. Caroline Simpson, by the way, she was a first team wide receiver and second team DB in conference play. So there you go. Uh, last year, Cheyenne Galbraith, she was an honorable mention quarterback as she graduated. So she'll be moving on. Uh, then you also have Maya Plotz, who was a first team center. She's also going to be leaving. We'll talk about that later but they will be returning jerica johnson she was a first team db and a second team receiver speedy playmaker out there when the ball is in her hands she makes plays period that's it she is a yak queen out there that's yard after catch. Uh, I mean, she is really dangerous and really tough to guard here. Probably somebody that you have to bracket here because, like I said, when she gets the ball in her hands, uh, she makes a lot happen. So, very explosive playmaker. And then as a DB, I mean, she locked up and did her thing. I want to say she had a couple uh, scores, pick sixes. So, there you go. And then you have Ashaya Smith. She was a second team rusher. Uh, I believe she also played running back for them as well. Uh, had some solid runs and plays throughout last season. Part of that younger team. Then you have Ashlyn Tuss. 
I feel like is super underrated. She made it as an honorable mention receiver and DB. There are some plays last year where, you know, she really came through for this University of St. Mary team, especially in the clutch and in some very close games. I mean, she really did her thing playing on both sides of the football. Uh, certified baller for sure. We also have Ellie Campbell, honorable mention for screen blocker. Uh, Dyer Stylus, I want to say she was an honorable mention utility player, but I don't believe she was with the team. And then I also want to mention Shannon Cooley here. Uh, she was on the very first USM team and last year was kind of just a tough season went through a lot of injuries and you know she was one of their top receivers the previous year as well so that was a really big blow they really had to rely on a lot of their freshmen to kind of help them out you know and so that was really tough on them but you know they were able to grow they got more reps here shannon unfortunately suffered an injury in that nai tournament last year and so she's on the roster this year we'll see about when she comes back and what the playing time might look like and all that great stuff but she is definitely somebody that really could be an all-conference receiver. Also, she's 5'11". She's their tallest player as well. And that would always help out with matchups and all of that great stuff. And so I really wanted to shout her out because I think she's going to be a big-time part of this team moving forward. Now, let's talk about some of the players that they are losing. Because they are losing three players who were all conference uh, mentions at least so are recognized one of them is shine galbraith that was their quarterback last year and the year before you know and so this will be the first year without shine galbraith at qb uh, along with the first year head coach and so that's going to be really interesting to see how that goes who steps up at the quarterback position i believe the skill position is pretty loaded. You have some very talented football players here who are going to do their thing and turn up. But you got to have a quarterback to distribute the football. And even then last year, there are some plays that I feel like were maybe left on the field there. Uh, but still a very good quarterback to be losing. And so it'll be interesting to see how she is replaced. On top of that, you're also losing Maya Plotz, Dayer Stellis, uh, both players who were on the team last year and were recognized. You gotta replace them. Um, Maya, she was their center, so I feel like that might be a little bit more replaceable, you know. And then you have Dair, who was a utility player. She made plays every now and then on both sides of the football. It was a big depth piece for them, especially considering they didn't have a lot of depth. So there you go. But those, and then, oh, so my bad, they're losing uh, Tian Blagrove, I want to say. Uh, she was just not on the roster this year, so there you go there along with Maya and Dair so or Dare I excuse me if I'm saying that wrong but they have added a couple new additions let's talk about their recruits here they added Sable Barnes uh listed as a quarterback from Texas actually was at Sam Houston State University previous to this here but she is the only player listed as a quarterback for them at least as of right now and so she will most likely be the QB for them. I know she also plays hoops as well, uh, so she's a pretty athletic player to have out there. I'm sure she could also play both sides. Then they're also bringing in Emily Cruz from Western High School in Miami, Florida. She's a center slash rusher, so that kind of fills in one area there. They're also bringing in Anna Ferguson, listed as a linebacker from Florida, adding a little bit more depth to their roster here and then they have two pretty big transfers um i would probably say sable barnes was probably a transfer too since she did come from another school but rebecca ruck uh she is listed as a tight end slash linebacker out of las vegas nevada previously at unlv she'll be joining this squad here adding a little bit more height to the team as well which should be good for them and then they're getting a pretty big get here Shaw Day Irvin 
Turbo, previously with a Midland University last year, uh, and was a big part of that Midland offense, I would say. There were a lot of plays just designed for her, and she's a shifty, fast player, uh, playmaker, that they are adding to this roster that already has a couple very good players. So, you know, that's a pretty big get for them here. Um, definitely somebody that could add a little bit more oomph to this offense. He saw what a good running back did for a team last year in Ottawa when they added Addie Orsburn because she had some big plays where she was the check down and she made something happen out of nothing. And so I think Sade could definitely do a lot of that for the St. Mary's team that is going to have a couple receivers that are going to attract attention between Shannon Cooley, Ashlyn Tuss, Caroline Simpson. Or, excuse me, not Ashlyn Tuss. I must have misread something. Ashlyn Tuss will not be returning, so that is another big loss here. But, Shade Irvin, uh, she could definitely play a little bit of receiver as well and help replace Ashlyn Tuss. But you still got Caroline Simpson, Shannon Cooley. I'd also throw in Ashia Smith as well. Jerrica Johnson, obviously. Oh my god, I almost forgot her. So, this is a pretty talented skill group here. A lot of these players will most likely be playing both ways. I mean, they only have 11 players listed on the roster here. So we'll see what happens. You know, uh, they do have a pretty small roster. We'll see if they add more as the season goes on, whether they're, you know, players that are part of other sports teams and they decide to play or whatnot. But it'll be really interesting to see what they do there. So there you go. But Let's talk about storylines moving forward. I mean, the University of St. Mary, they're a pretty good program. They're a program that has been competitive the last couple years here. Uh, didn't quite end the way they wanted to last season against Kansas Wesley and losing to them in the silver bracket. So one's got to wonder, can they get on the level of a Kansas Wesleyan or Ottawa, you know? That's always going to be a question, I would think. We'll see what happens there. I think they have the talent to, you know, be able to score and uh, keep up with them for sure, I would say. Defensively, I think they could also get some pretty good stops. Last year, their defense did well a lot of the time. But you also got to keep in mind, you know, these are players that are playing both ways. And so as games drag on or, you know, there's longer drives or just, you know, things that are a little bit more exhaustive. It gets tougher, you know, either the defensive or offensive side of the ball suffers because they're obviously getting tired, they're playing both ways. There's a lot of teams that have at least a good core playing just offense or just defense, you know, and so they're not as exhausted or tired, I would say. And so the numbers, that'll definitely be something to be keeping track of. And then obviously, you have a first-year head coach. You're going to have a first-year quarterback. How is that going to work? You know, Is she going to be able to live up to expectations, uh, coach this team up, and have them be competitive again this year? How is the quarterback going to do? Because it's one thing to have all this talent on offense and in the skill positions, but you need a quarterback to get them the ball, to run the offense, do all that great stuff, you know. And so uh, we'll see if Sable Barnes could hold it down or if there's maybe some other players on this roster who could potentially walk in and uh, play quarterback for them and do a good job, you know. So th there's a couple questions for sure. You know, there's definitely a couple questions as always, but, you know, those are the storylines for the University of St. Mary. Other than that, they're returning a number of good players here, plus adding Shade Irvin. That's big time. I mean, you have Jerrica Johnson and Shannon Cooley for one more season. You have Caroline Simpson, who's been an absolute star. I think Ashia Smith could have more of a breakout season this year. She really came on near the end of last year, I would say. So there you go. You also have Elle Campbell out there, Ellie Campbell out there. Um, you got a number of players returning, but you're going to need some of these new additions, uh, recruits or transfers to really turn up, you know, for this team to not only maintain where they were last year, but take a step forward. So we will see what happens here. Now let's talk about this next team here, Midland University. 
uh, one of two teams in the KCAC to not have a first-year head coach. Head coach Jason Jones will be returning for this next year here. Uh, him, along with the Sour Sisters, have been with their programs in all of their existence so far. But let's talk about last year. Last year was a little bit of a tougher year here. Uh, I mean, they went 5-12, and 12 and it didn't start out easy at all. They started out playing Sun Conference teams, actually, where they lost to Kaiser 0-41. to 41. That was the infamous Kennedy Foster catch game. They lost to St. Thomas University 0-40, to 40, and then finally they lost to Florida Memorial 0-9. to 9. That was definitely a winnable game here, um, but... You know, it is what it is. And then it didn't get easier. They came back and they played Ottawa, the defending national champion. So a couple contenders, a tough Sun Conference team. So not exactly the way you wanted to get started here. I mean, they were 0-4 to start, but playing some very good teams. They would eventually bounce back, though, and they would beat the University of St. Mary 38-25 to in Kansas, by the way. So that was pretty big time there. That had to have been a confidence booster. But then they went on another losing streak here, losing to Kansas Wesleyan. Ottawa again lost to the University of St. Mary by basically a touchdown 26 to 19. Uh, lost to KWU again. Lost to University of St. Mary, this time in Nebraska by a touchdown 14 to 20 before they ended the regular season with a pair of dubs over Cotty here. Uh, just taking care of business 60 0, 32 to 6. So, gotta feel good about that. Then in the KCAC Invitational, Played Cotty, beat them again, so that was their fourth win of the season, I believe, right there. And then lost to Ottawa in the semifinals of that KCAC tournament. Then in the NAI Invitational, the national tournament, they would play St. Thomas University, lose to them 7-34, to that was pretty tough. But they would go ahead and get their revenge against Florida Memorial University here, a team they lost to by nine the previous, um, well, yeah, the previous matchup way earlier on in the season, and they would beat them 27 to 14. Unfortunately, was not able to watch that game because the stream was so bad. I'm not gonna lie, but uh, they did well in that game, and then they made the silver bracket where they would lose to the University of St. Mary. 25 to 13 played a relatively well game if i remember you know it was a lot closer than i would say the score would indicate here they had their chances they just couldn't quite get it done so a tough go last year i mean they had some younger players they had some returning players but they just weren't quite able to put it together going into the third year of this program I think we could definitely see a lot more consistently here. We'll talk about the players and all that great stuff in a minute. But let's talk about this year's schedule here. So, once again, they start the season out of state, playing out of conference teams, which honestly I really love. Uh, they start out in Tennessee, actually, on March 2nd. That's where they play Milligan University. And then newcomer, a uh, new program here, Reinhardt University, who will be making the trip out of Georgia to Tennessee. And so they'll play both of those teams in Tennessee to start the season. After that, they will travel to Campbellsville, Kentucky here, where they will play two more out-of-conference teams. Uh, one of them, I believe, is a two-year college, a junior college here in Bryant and Stratton College. So that's a first-year program. And then they play Campbellsville right after that. Uh, another first-year program. So four games starting out of state here. Three of them are first-year programs, though. So there is a pretty good chance that they could start out 4-0 to start the season, which would be really good for them, a good momentum, because after that, they go ahead and take a week off before they play the University of St. Mary in Kansas. I would kind of consider that a rivalry game, and that would basically kick off their conference play here, where they play everyone twice in their conference, both at home and away. And on top of that, they also get to play Bethel College, or sorry, not Bethel College, Fort Scott Community College uh, out of Kansas. I feel like all of these uh, KCAC teams are going to get to play them uh, near the end of the season. That's on April 19th at home in Nebraska. So you got to love that. 
Midland will actually have six home games, which I feel like is just a lot more than what they've had before. Last year, felt like they barely were able to play at home, so it's good to see this. Uh, also, a lot of those home games are kind of near the end of the season here as well, so you get to relax just a little bit being at home. But those are also must-win games in my eyes here. Definitely a very interesting schedule here. Uh, out of all the teams I've done research on, they have one of the most unique schedules, uh, giving a lot of these first-year teams a chance to play them, which I absolutely love. But it'll be a good test to see where this team is. Now, speaking of this team, they only had one player make our all-playmaker team. And that's actually Casey Thompson, their linebacker. Uh, she is extremely talented here. She will be returning for another year here. Uh, she is listed as a fifth year player out of nebraska you know out of omaha nebraska so gotta love that but she's been a leader for this team uh i believe she is one of the few three-year players on this squad so you gotta absolutely love that you're bringing back the leader of your defense you know uh i would say the leader of your team period a captain and so that really should go a long way for the development of this younger squad so there you go there excellent linebacker honestly now she made first let's talk about all conference recognitions and whatnot casey thompson would be a first team linebacker all kcac uh linebacker there so you gotta love that you also have michaela nunez who was a first team utility player plus second team wide receiver she's another uh player who has been there for three years so absolutely love to see her returning here and then you got a couple players who you know, uh, we're freshmen last year. Sydney Red, she was a second team rusher. You had Shade Irvin, who was a big part of this offense. Obviously, I just talked about it. She has transferred to the University of St. Mary's, so she's no longer on the team. But you have Cassandra Chavez. Uh, she was an honorable mention at center. She'll be returning. You have Allison Malfair, who was an honorable mention wide receiver. I don't believe she will be back here. Don't see her on the roster, so that's kind of tough. But you have Cheyenne Duran, who's an honorable mention DB. She will be returning. Um, she had a pretty good, like kind of end of the season i would say because uh, this defense really played well uh at times at the end so gotta shout her out uh along with nadia simpson honorable mention utility player as well she will be coming back here uh she should be another big part of this defense as well listed as a linebacker did well last year and then there's another player i want to make sure i go ahead and shout out here and that is angel Iwani here the only player listed at quarterback on the roster as of right now last year she won the quarterback position and um she had her ups and downs honestly as a freshman i feel like there are times maybe i was a little bit tough on her cody was a little bit tough on her but honestly she played some really good football at times uh she played well enough to win the position which was a position that was kind of up in the air and she had flashes, and so you're returning her. She's going to be a returning starter for you. And look, quarterback, that's a big position. Going into this year, I don't think there's going to be a lot of competition and stuff for that. I assume she's taken the whole offseason to prepare furthermore for this and uh, continue to improve. So absolutely got to love that. Now, they are losing a number of players here. I'm just going to go down the line and list all of them. Uh, they're losing Eliciana Patterson. That was somebody who was on the team uh, in 2020. So that's a big one. Uh, they're losing Spencer Mock, Sanai Lee, Wendy Mancia, Addison Johnson, Theresa Valfuti, I want to say. I'm definitely butchering that. I am so sorry about that. So there you go. But they are going to be losing her. Amari Carroll, Savannah Gonzalez uh, LeBaron. Uh, Dimni Crichton, I want to say, Morgan Kalisek, and then you have your transfers I talked about here, Shade Irvin, she transferred to the University of St. Mary, they have a quarterback, Haley Stanton, who has transferred back home to the uh, to Florida Memorial University, we'll talk about her on that episode later, excuse me, I think I said I 
had Amari Carroll leaving, uh, she will be returning. I just saw her on the roster here, so my bad, my mistake there. And I did mention this, uh, or I did mention this earlier, but Allison Montfair will not be on the team, which is a shame because she did make some pretty solid plays for them. So there you go there, but they are bringing in a number of new recruits here. Um, and I'm going to just apologize ahead of time if I mispronounce some, but they're bringing in Diva Jones out of Las Vegas, Nevada from Shadow Ridge High School. She is a good athlete, plays both wide receiver and DB. Uh, her senior year, or at least, yeah, this is her senior year. She had 1,112 receiving yards on 47 receptions and 13 receiving touchdowns. Also tallied uh, 126 tackles slash flag pulls and eight interception so that is pretty good a great athlete from nevada that they are adding to the roster here king of nevada they're also adding Alyssa butler uh played for centennial in nevada she had a 957 receiving yards and 11 touchdowns her senior season so boom there you go there they also have leanne lindstrom from desert oasis in nevada they have lila uh, I want to say it's Elizaldi, I want to say, from Green Valley High School in Nevada. Very heavily recruiting out of Nevada, which is no surprise here. Then they go to Florida and they pick up a pretty good wide receiver slash center, Kobe J, from uh, Popano Beach High School out of Florida there. Um, they also add Eunice Sambele, I want to say, receiver linebacker from Henderson, Nevada. Um, they add Emily Farron from Gilbert, Arizona, uh, a, that's, well, that's one of the first Arizona players, uh, to be recruited out of there. She has played football most of her life, at least that's what it says, uh, from my research and from the bio provided. So there you go there. I believe she's also the first Arizona player to make a Midland roster, so that's pretty big time. They also have Alexis Dominguez Millsap out of a Palo Verde High School in Las Vegas, Nevada. She is listed as an athlete. They have Jocelyn Lopez, another athlete from Las Vegas High School in Nevada. They have me Mayana Siggers, I want to say, a center from Florida. And then last but not least, they have Alia Livingston, a wide receiver DB from Houston, Texas. So love to see that there. Uh, very diverse recruiting class here, I would say, or at least from a number of different spots. A lot of these players are also listed as athletes playing both ways and whatnot. So it'll be interesting to see who gets playing time, uh, who gets to really step up and do their thing and uh, play a good role for this team here but honestly i mean they have a pretty good core a core of players that have been here before you know and should contribute to this team and add more stability to this team i'm looking at players like sydney red casey thompson obviously michaela nunez who's an excellent athlete i think she could really turn up uh this year um great db and receiver by the way amari carroll and linebacker uh, Cassandra Chavez, she's another returning player here. Um, you also have a quarterback, Angel Yuani, Nadia Simpson. I mean, you have players on this roster who could play. I think it's just a matter of putting it together. And so, storylines for Midland moving forward, you know, the, I, I would say the quarterback position is definitely one of them. I feel like Angel Yuani will be the presumed starter, and so it's probably her job to lose and so i think one of the bigger storylines is seeing how much she's improved what they're going to do at the quarterback position if they're going to stay loyal and whatnot and they have last year they really stuck with her and so um i think it's definitely a bit of a statement not having any other players listed at quarterback on this list but you know i'm sure if things aren't working out they will make a change if they need to but definitely looking for some consistent more consistent play from her and some improvement as well i think she is more than capable of doing that so there you go uh, another storyline here i'm looking at some of these older players they do have a couple um seniors 
and fifth year players i'm looking at casey thompson michaela nunez well i guess those are the two main ones but i'm really looking at those two and seeing you know what kind of leadership could they provide to this team those are two players that are entering their third years there's nobody else on this roster that has been on the team longer than them really looking for them to continue to lead make big plays like they do i think they're talented enough and then looking at players that are returning you know sydney red uh, like I mentioned, Angel Uwani, Cassandra Chavez, uh, Addison Johnson, Shine Duran, Nadia Simpson. I mean, can those players take another step forward and really contribute to this squad? Amari Carroll, that's what I'm missing. How much more have they gelled together as teammates and as players? Can this defense be ready and be more consistent this year? I think last year they showed a lot of flashes throughout the season. And, you know, some of it's not their fault. Some of it is the offense not pulling their weight as well. But, you know, there are also times where, you know, they just blew a coverage, honestly. And so we're going to see uh, them continue to gel and get better. Altogether, I think the biggest storyline with Midland is how much more they could improve. I think this is a team that realistically could be one of the best teams in the KCAC and the country. Uh, last year, I mean, they finished ninth in our power rankings. By the way, the University of St. Mary finished seventh in the power rankings. I didn't mention it on that one. But they finished ninth, you know. Uh, and a lot of it was because they were able to beat FMU, which is good. And they had very convincing wins against Cotty. And I want to say they would have probably had really convincing dubs against Milligan as well. I believe they're a better team than them. Um, so just throwing all that out there. And so going into this year, the big question is going to be how much more can they improve? You know, what have they learned from last season? How much more can they prove themselves? I mean, look, this is a roster. This is a coaching staff that's been around. I mean, there's vets on the team. There's a lot of players who are returning. You know, the coaching staff is back. Obviously, eventually you got to get better. You know, and I think this is going to be the year that they really take a good step forward with the roster they built on last year and then all the additions they have this year. Now, how much they improve by will definitely be up in the air, I would say. I feel like they have a really big range of wins. You know, they could either, you know, win five games. I think they'll probably win more than five games, but win five games like they did last year. Or, you know, they could maybe be approaching that 10-win type of benchmark there. If not, maybe a little bit more, potentially, you know. And obviously, that not only includes playing well in the regular season, but performing in the postseason as well. I think that's a, definitely a big deal there. And so, this year, I mean, we'll see what happens. Look, there's a lot of things that are staying consistent Usually when you have things that stay consistent, you should see some type of improvement, especially, I mean, that's a trend in all young programs, right? And so we'll see what happens this year. We'll see who takes those steps forward uh, and what not. But it should be a very interesting year for Midland. They could either be one of the teams that are lower in their conference or they could vie with Kansas Wesleyan and the University of St. Mary's as one of the uh and Ottawa, obviously, as one of the top-tier teams in the KCAC this year. But, you know, it's really up to them. We'll see what happens. Definitely should be a very interesting and perplexing team to follow. I mean, they're a team that is also going to be playing a lot of out-of-conference games as well against first-year programs more than, I believe, anybody else in their conference, I want to say. Uh, maybe except for one team, though. And that one team is Ottawa the defending national champs, two-time national champs, and also two-time KCAC conference champions here. They have basically ran this conference since flag football has started, and I would definitely say they are one of the favorites to continue that and win the KCAC and probably win the national championship as well. Uh, I mean, until they lose one of those big games, they're still the champs. I'm, they're still probably number one for now, you know. But let's go ahead and talk about how last season went. So went 16-2, and 8-0 uh, and 0 in conference play, though. They didn't lose to anybody in the KCAC. 
but they did get two losses that happened in the regular season. One of them was when they went to Florida and they lost to Thomas 7-19 to in a very close one. Uh, they would eventually avenge that and beat Thomas in a close game, the national championship 24-20. to So there you go there. But then in the regular season as well, their other loss was a very uncharacteristic loss to Weber, 0-31. to I don't know if they've... I think that's the only shutout in program history where they got shut out i am pretty sure of that so that was really uncharacteristic though i would say i mean they did beat warner 45 to 21 while on that trip but that was kind of a tougher road trip that they took but that honestly made them better i would say you know and got them ready for the national tournament where they played some pretty close games against some very talented squads i mean on the way there they beat well first off they beat florida memorial 34 to 7 in pool play they also beat st thomas 19 to 7 that was a pretty close game, closer than I would have uh, thought, honestly, going into that one. And then finally, they made the gold bracket here in the semis. They played Kaiser University and would just barely beat them here, uh, but still beat them, though, 26-21 to here. I actually feel like Kaiser scored a... Uh, they scored a touchdown or something last second to make that a little bit closer than what it seemed, so... There you go. And then they had an instant classic against Thomas University here. Go ahead and uh, check out that episode if you want. But basically, it came down to this. Madison Carrera found Bailey Hodgins for a touchdown with 3.55 left to give Ottawa the lead. And then Ottawa from there really just leaned on their defense who came to play and really won them this game in the last uh, couple minutes of this national championship here. They would go ahead and force a punt with about two minutes left and then they, you know, were not able to move the ball and so they had to punt it and then thomas would take over they would drive down get into ottawa territory but on third and 14 abby brown came up with the clutch interception to seal this one and give ottawa their second national championship extremely well deserved for them as they beat them 24 to 20. before we talk um about this season i just want to say in all of their conference games, it really wasn't ever close. I mean, they blew out basically everyone. Uh, their closest conference game, and this does include their NAI or sorry, their KCAC end of the year tournament. Their closest conference game was a 45 to 19 win over Kansas Wesleyan on March 26th here. Um, or sorry, not March 26th, April 8th there that was kind of a game that kansas wesleyan just let get away from them they allowed way too many points obviously and that's why they lost uh but you know ottawa would keep it rolling they'd beat midland 34 to 6 in the kcac tournament and then beat kansas wesleyan kansas wesleyan in the conference tournament 34 to 7 and so they haven't really faced a real big scare here in their conference in a long time actually ever they haven't faced a real scare ever i think outside of that 45 to 19 win i think the next closest i want to say the next closest conference win was a 47 to 19 dub that was also over kansas wesleyan so kind of tough they really ran this conference and I don't really see that changing. There might be some teams that will challenge them a little bit more this year as, you know, teams are going into their third year. But they should really be the favorites to win the KCAC again. And then, you know, probably be a favorite for the national championship being the defending champs. Let's talk about this next football season here uh by the way coached by liz and katie sowers uh one of the only coaches in the entire kcac to have coached their team all three years along with jason jones anyways though to start this 2023 campaign they start out by playing the university of fort lauderdale uh that is 
in Salina, Kansas, which is interesting here. Uh, they play them February 25th. They would also play Kansas Wesleyan later that day as well. Fort Lauderdale, I believe, is a newer program. They are a first-year program, so there you go. So they get to play them, and then they play Kansas Wesleyan right off the bat to start. And they make a shorter trip down to Florida here, where they play two teams. Oh, they play two club teams, but I'm pretty sure one of these were the national uh, club flag football champs in recent years, so they're pretty good. But they play Florida Atlantic University, and then a couple days later, they play the University of Central Florida. And so those should be... Really interesting games. Unfortunately, um, I can't afford to, or none of us could afford to fly to Florida. Plus, I don't think they're going to be streaming them. But those should be really interesting games and should be good challenges for this Ottawa team here. So there you go. But then after that, they come back home and they basically play out the rest of their conference play here. Uh, play every team twice except for Bethel, it looks like. Um, I only see one game scheduled against them, which is interesting, but whatever. And then they also play Reinhardt University April 8th, not in Kansas, but in Georgia, actually. So that'll be really interesting seeing how that fares. So a couple out of conference games here, Fort Lauderdale, uh, then you have your club teams, Florida Atlantic, Central Florida, and then you have Reinhardt in Georgia. So you got to make the trip for that. Other than that, they are playing their regular season as usual, playing each team twice, except for Bethel. I assume they're probably going to add another Bethel game, and then that'll complete it. So there you go. That's how this season should look. Uh, I think it's fair to say they are probably favored pretty well in all of these games moving forward we'll see how the uh kcac tournament and the nei tournament goes though but let's talk about this roster here this is an extremely talented roster probably the best in the entire country here if not one of the best now let's talk about their all playmaker candidates that made our list and were some of the best in the country. Uh, their quarterback, Madison Carrera, made it. Alyssa Linkus, the receiver, made it. Abby Brown, a DB, or we labeled her as a DB, she made it. And then Addison Orsburn would actually make our all freshman team here. Uh, she was a big time speedy running back for them. Kind of added a whole new dimension to this offense here uh, as she was able to, you know, make some really big plays off of those checkdowns. So definitely somebody to look out for. But let's go ahead and talk about all conference and some of the recognition here. Madison Carrera, she won co-player of the year and was second team quarterback just behind Brianna Hernandez Silva there. Alyssa Linkus was the first team receiver. Uh, Clara Bodaway last year for this team was the first team receiver. She is graduated though now and is back in Canada. I want to say still doing her thing playing flag football. So good for her. Uh, Jaslyn Camacho was the first team receiver. Addison Orsburn was the first team screen blocker and second team running back. Uh, so there you go there. Abby Brown, first team linebacker. Alyssa Gillespie, first team linebacker. Jesus. Nina Crave de Peralta, first team DB. Haley McKay, first team DB. And then we have some second team and honorable mentions here. Brianna Beto was um, considered as a linebacker there. I think second team. Jennifer Anthony there at DB. Bailey Hodgins, a freshman, was a wide out honorable mention. And then Courtney Willie at center was an honorable mention as well. So a lot of fantastic fantastic players here uh let's talk about some players that they are losing though they are losing a couple that played pretty big parts and were all conference uh claire Bodaway already talked about her she has graduated back in canada doing her thing there she did a lot for this team at receiver um running back quarterback sometimes it felt like i mean they really used her in a lot of different ways and so that's going to be kind of a big miss here for this team plus she was one of the og uh athletes for this squad was on that first national championship team so you're gonna miss that then you have brianna beto she is listed as a student assistant uh under coaches but not on the roster i don't believe um she was a lot she was considered and recognized 
as an all-conference linebacker. I don't know if it was second team or honorable mention, but she was definitely in that consideration. Along with Jennifer Anthony at DB, she has graduated as well, and she was definitely in those considerations uh, and recognized as an all-conference type of player. And so three players that were part uh, and started that were a part of their national championship team last year will be gone. Not the worst, though. Three out of... I guess 14-ish starters is definitely not bad at all because everyone else will be returning. Some other players that I didn't see on the roster uh, but were on it last year. You have Tiffany, Tiffany Cuevas, uh, Kylie Santana, Sydney Rude, who was one of their quarterbacks, and then Sienna Curtis. So those are the players they are losing, but they are bringing in a num a very strong class. I would say only seven additions here. But definitely a lot of players that could really contribute to this squad and help replace some of the players they lost. Start with the recruits. Uh, they have Jukani Washington. Hopefully I'm saying that right. I feel like I'm butchering it and I apologize if I am. But from Georgia here, Decatur, uh, listed as a wide receiver running back. I mean, she was a 2022 Area Player of the Year over there and was an all-region selection in Georgia. So she will be adding to the depth here for this squad. Uh, they're also adding on Maya Quinn out of Boca Raton, Florida. I feel like I just screwed that up. But went to Spanish River. That's a very good program down there in Florida. She's listed as a running back linebacker. Should be able to contribute good minutes to that squad. They also brought in Madison Berg here out of Henderson, Nevada. The 5'8 wide receiver in DB was actually named player of the year in flag football and so that is going to be a huge pickup but i do want to talk a little bit more in depth about some of these other players here they're going to be bringing lauren clark from texas he was actually featured on playmakers corner episode 155 here uh, we broke down her film, so if you want to hear more about her, go ahead and check that out. But she is an elite pass rusher playing for one of the best flag football clubs and programs in the entire country. That is Texas Fury. They have so many fantastic athletes out there that will be playing on this level. And Lauren Clark is one of those. And so go ahead and check out that episode. She is an elite rusher. Should provide a pretty big boost to this defense here. Um, by the way, out of Austin, Texas, shout out that. She will be adding a pretty good edge to an already talented defense here. It will be interesting to see what her playing time is looking like. Listed as a running back as well, by the way. So there you go. That is a huge pickup getting one of the best rushers in the entire country. And to add on to this already talented recruiting class, they are adding Tatiana Dos Santos out of Panama City, Panama, the 5'10 wide receiver here. Uh, she was a member of that 2022 NFL Flag Football National Championship team, uh, Panama White, and she earned MVP honors. Uh, if you remember, that team actually played Texas Fury in that national championship. That was during the Pro Bowl last year. So that was pretty big time where they really showed out. And she was a big time contributor to that squad. And so she is going to be a beast of a receiver and athlete to add to the squad. Uh, also on top of that, she did make the adult national team roster for Panama. And did compete in those world games as well. I mean, she is a huge pickup for this squad that is already stacked we were informed about her last year uh but you know we wanted to come back to that and talk about it in this preview here and so she's going to be a huge pickup here probably somebody that is going to be an issue right away uh a uh, player that you're going to have to bracket and double team and do all that great stuff but you know you already have players like uh, Jaslyn Camacho, Lisa Linkus, Bailey Hodgins who you already have to pay attention to and so this is going to be a very good wide receiving group here probably one of the best in the entire country with the addition of her but it does not 
stop there. They also had two transfers from the Sun Conference here. They add Suzanne Kaufman from Weber International University, wide receiver DB. She made some really big plays for Weber over there. Uh, that's a pretty big loss for them to be honest with you and then they're also adding dj dejanice paris from saint thomas university listed here as a linebacker but i know could play some receiver as well was arguably the star for saint thomas to be honest with you the leader for them a big time player and athlete but she has taken her talents to ottawa to go ahead and add on to that squad here and contribute to a very already extremely stacked and talented team. All of those players are going to help replace the likes of Clara Butterway, Brianna Beto, Jennifer Anthony, and I think they are going to be able to do that very well. DJ Paris and Suzanne Kaufman are proven starters, and I want to say they are all conference in the Sun Conference as well, which is a very competitive flag football conference out there. So, yeah, no, Ottawa just got that much better. I mean, if they weren't, even without all these recruits and additions and transfers, they were already the favorites. This just kind of adds more to that effort here. This really could be a season where they don't lose a game at all. Um, I could see that, and it's just not super close. They have that level of potential. And I mean, we say that, I feel like we said that last year, but I think this year for sure, just looking at the recruits they brought in, you know, Tatiana Dos Santos, Lauren Clark, Madison Berg, Maya Quinn, Chikani Washington. I mean, these are the best of the best player of the years in their states, you know, um, international uh, players that are top tier and whatnot as well. I mean, they have really gotten stronger here, and it's really just going to be easier, or it should be probably relatively easier moving forward. Now, let's let's talk a little bit more about this next year here, talk about some storylines. I do want to throw out there, in our final PMC Power Rankings, they obviously finished at one, being the national champs, and I mean, just beating some excellent teams on the way there. They had a very tough road to the national championship in that tournament, beating Kaiser, beating Thomas, who has an excellent defense. I mean, they really showed out and did their thing. And then even before that, winning the KCAC pretty handedly. And so going into this year, storylines, can they do it again? That is pretty much That pretty much summarizes the entire thing. Can they do it again? Can they three-peat both as national champs, as conference champs, all of that great stuff? Um, so I think that's pretty much the main storyline for them. There's really not much to add there. I mean, this is a very talented group, you know, as long as they're healthy and all that great stuff, they really shouldn't lose to anybody. But even then, I mean, they are so deep. There's going to be a lot of players that are going to be able to develop and get some good playing time and experience for them that will contribute to next year's team already. Uh, Madison Carrera, I mean, she'll be coming back. She's going to be the head of this offense. She'll be great. But I do also want to shout out Bailey Hodgins, uh, played quarterback uh, last year, played receiver mostly, but actually also played quarterback in the X League for the Atlanta Empire and was the youngest starting quarterback in that league last year as a teenager. The only teenager, I think, uh, in the league. I might be mistaken there, but she played really well. And she is the backup to Madison Carrera. Probably the player to take over whenever Madison uh, retires and moves on and all that great stuff. And so you got to look out for Bailey Hodgins because I'm sure she'll probably get a couple more quarterback snaps as, you know, they beat these teams and all that great stuff there. And so got to look out for her. And then on the defensive side of the ball, I mean, they're returning pretty much everyone. Uh, Lauren Clark is going to be really interesting, seeing if she could get in there and make some plays, along with Dejanice Paris, Suzanne Kaufman. I mean, really, this is a veteran defense at this point. First off, the core of this defense won two national championships. So there you go. Then you add on three really good players, Lauren Clark, who has played at a high level for a really long time. One of the elite rushers in this game. I'm sure she'll get some playing time. You have Dejanice Paris, Suzanne Kaufman, who did their thing in the Sun Conference, uh, which is arguably a tougher conference, honestly, and were really successful. You know, and they're going to be adding their talents to this defense as well. And so this defense is going to have a lot of firepower, just as much firepower as this offense, I would say. So 
there you go there i mean look this is there's a lot of players to be following seeing which uh freshmen might come out and turn up here and uh you know which players from last year might turn up if there are any surprises but honestly the one question remains can they do it again and that's really all that matters uh that also as well they're not playing any florida teams at least not any any ia florida teams which is interesting i'm sure they reached out and whatnot but uh hey it is what it is in the last two years i mean they lost to an nai florida team before winning the national championship their first year was to kaiser they lost them in the regular season then beat them in the postseason and then they lost to thomas in the regular season before beating them obviously in the national championship and so no none of those teams to play here so it'll be interesting to see if they could keep up that motivation throughout the season and obviously into the national tournament as well but this should be an extremely exciting team to watch make sure you go ahead and support them if you can go to games uh they're big time you know this is definitely a squad that as a number of players that have the ability to eventually play on the pro level as well and that could be really interesting to track later on in the far future but uh there you go that is ottawa university and the preview for the kansas collegiate athletic conference like i said we will talk about bethel uh college who will be joining this conference here in a later episode when we talk about a bunch of new programs also i just realized uh milligan has not is not part of the kcac or sun conference and so we'll talk about teams like milligan uh in that episode as well who are not part of the one or two major conferences here in women's flag football so all of that coming at a later date we'll talk about sun conference teams next week doing the same thing we did here as well because the 2023 season is upon us uh we're gonna be having some games here pretty soon and so we are really excited for that and so if you want to follow uh this season and follow us go ahead we'll be covering it to the best of our abilities here myself cody and our new intern uh gideon as well will be helping cover this uh hoping to make it to the national championship we'll see money is uh is is an issue for sure but we'll see if we could do that would really love to so there you go but anyways we're gonna cover these teams and if you want to uh, see more coverage and all that great stuff go ahead and follow us on social media at playmakers corner that's facebook instagram twitter and tiktok as well we'll be posting more about women's flag football on tiktok uh, hopefully we'll have a little tiktok preview put out there and then on top of that follow us on youtube and twitch at playmakers corner as well any tiktoks we uh, post there we will be posting on youtube as a short and then on twitch we'll hopefully be doing some live streams every now and then uh was thinking about making these previews as a live stream but i really wanted to take my time and get all the details right at least that i know of and uh do all that great stuff and talk about it uh here and make sure i get to edit that as well so it's a nice little uh compact thing for you the fans to listen to ahead of this season so there you go and by the way if you are listening to this and you have notes or things you want to pass on to us that you feel like we should know about some of these teams feel free to dm us uh dm me also privately at simon voyanos i'll be doing a lot of the coverage again this season uh always open to that just knowing some of the things and whatnot um the dms are always open as long as it's positive if it's negative i'm not gonna reply to you i already get enough negative dms from colorado um that's a whole nother thing but it's open as long as it's positive or it comes off as positive to start so there you go but thank you so much for rocking with us tune in next week we'll be talking about the sun conference and the week after that we'll be talking about a bunch of new programs plus teams like milligan should be really exciting but we'll catch you later